These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So for working with lenses and mirrors, one of our key equations is going to be this one. Uh, we can call this the lens-mirror equation because it works for both lenses and mirrors. Different, different textbooks use different symbols for these. Um, I think your textbook actually calls them something like di and do, but that just seems like a needless complication. We can just use i for the image distance and o for the object distance. Just be careful when you write the o, you should write it with a little curly q, curly q, so we don't think that it's a zero. So it's good to write the o like this. Uh, but we can use these. So what does f stand for? That is the focal length distance. This is the image distance, and O is the object distance. So even though your textbook uses slightly different symbols, I think these are the most intuitive symbols to use. Uh, that should make plain uh, what we're doing. OK, and as we go along, we're going to try to understand much better what each of these things stands for. Now, um, as is usually the case in physics, uh, one of the most important obstacles to surmount is getting the right signs. In fact, that's one of the biggest sources of mistakes here, is putting the, right so uh, putting the wrong signs in. Notice that I didn't put any dots in this equation, so none of these are magnitudes. We have to put in the right sign for all of them. So we really need to be focused on the signs. And remember, our general uh, habit is going to be we're always going to write down a number with a sign. Even if it's a positive number, we'll write it down with a sign, and that'll help to keep us focused on that. So we want to get in the habit of always writing a sign in this equation. OK, so let's start uh, by talking about uh, some of these ideas. So for example, here we have a mirror. Here's a mirror, and we might use the convention that these lines here mean the back of the mirror. So this is the reflective front of the mirror over here. Would you call this convex or concave? Uh, concave. That's a concave mirror. You might remember the mnemonic from calculus that if you're looking into something and it looks like you're looking into a cave, that's concave. So it looks like you're looking into a cave here. So this would be a concave mirror. Now we have to decide if this is a converging or diverging mirror. Uh, that is, does it make light converge or diverge? Well, if I put two rays in here, I don't know whether people have common sense for this. Um, does it seem like the two rays would bend towards each other or away from each other? To me, it's kind of intuitive that they would bend towards each other like this. So this is a converging mirror. A converging mirror. Okay. And uh, then let's take a look, say, at this mirror. So here's the reflective front. Uh, so would this be concave or convex? Convex. Because it doesn't look like you're looking into a cave when you look at it. And if we have a couple of beams coming in towards this mirror, um, I hope that it's intuitive. I don't know that the outgoing beams would diverge from each other. So this is what we would call a diverging device, because it makes the beams diverge. OK. Here's a lens. This is clearly a lens and not a mirror. Would you call that convex or concave? Remember to use our mnemonic. If you look at the lens, does it look like you're looking into a cave? Maybe you're not sure because you're not sure which, uh, which surface yeah. to look at here. Uh, but if you're looking at the lens, let's focus on the surface that's closest to the eye. Does it seem like the surface that's closest to the eye here is convex or concave? Convex. Convex. This is what's called a convex lens. Maybe to be clear, we would call it convex to the outside. Both of these surfaces here are convex to the outside air. OK, so this is a convex lens.
and we have to decide whether it would be converging or diverging. Well, it turns out that it makes the light waves bend like this towards the central axis, so this tends to make the outgoing light rays, well, is this converging or diverging? Um, it diverges and converges. Take our time on that. Or it converges and diverges. Yeah. But, so the, the question is, were the rays originally moving towards each other or away? They were originally bent towards each other Correct. to converge. They certainly don't look like this, where they're diverging from the start. So this is what we would consider a converging device. And then we can have another type of lens. So here we have one more type of lens, convex or concave. Concave, because when you look at it from the outside, it always looks like you're looking into a cave. And which way are the light rays going to bend here now, towards each other or away from each other? This type of lens would make the rays bend like this, so would that be converging or diverging? Diverging. Diverging. So if you can compare these, I can think it maybe it's clearer why we would call this a converging device, whereas here they were diverging from the start. So we had a little table here of all the different types of lenses and mirrors, and this is going to be a pretty crucial uh, table. Now, um, is your class, your, do you have a class where you get to use a cheat sheet or memorize things? All right, so you have to memorize this. All right, now why is this so important? Well, the most re important reason this is important is that whether something is converging or diverging tells you the sign of the focal length. Remember that one of the biggest challenges in using this <laughs> equation is the sign of the focal length. Um, well, I don't know. Does, does converging sound like a positive word to you or a negative word? Positive. Yeah, to me it just kind of sounds like a positive word. So it's convenient that it's been chosen that that would represent the positive focal length. And to me, diverging sounds like a mildly negative sounding word. So it's convenient that that was chosen as a negative focal length. So the whole reason we went through all this discussion here was just to figure out the sign of f. Remember that every time we write down f, we have to put it with either a plus or a minus sign. And this is how we figure out which it is. Converging devices are always positive, and diverging are always negative, and that's for either a lens or a mirror. A converging lens or a mirror has a positive focal point length, and a diverging lens or mirror has a negative focal length. Now, one thing that this table <coughs> demonstrates is that the terms convex and concave are not very useful. The reason they're not useful is notice that a convex lens is converging, but a convex mirror is diverging. It gives you two different results. A convex lens has a positive focal length, but a convex mirror has a negative focal length. So it doesn't really do much good to learn whether something's convex or, con uh, or concave, because that doesn't really tell you directly what the sign of the focal length is. It's much more convenient to focus on whether something's converging or diverging, because converging always means positive focal length for either lenses or mirrors, and diverging always means negative focal length. So, um, so the, um, so the main point of this table is we don't want to focus too much on convex or concave because that gives different results for lenses or mirrors. Focus on converging or diverging. In fact, the only reason when you would ever even use the terms convex or concave is if the question asks you about that. But you should always try to translate things into converging and diverging. Okay, and then that tells us the sign of F. So do you have the handouts? I don't know if you have the latest version. I just put a new version up. Or actually, I didn't put a new version up. So yeah, you don't. So um, here's the new version. So. Um, Anyway, this is just the table we just went over, but I think it's useful to have it in one place. So as we talk about this, it has to be memorized. And the whole point of this table here, uh, at the bottom of page one of the handout, is to figure out whether f is positive or negative. Okay. So. If I draw this mirror, which of the variables does it tell, tell us about, f, i, or o? Well, looking at this tells us about f. And does it tell us that it's positive or negative? It tells us that it's positive. Now, is this converging? Excuse me, negative. Because it's uh, divergence. I kind of flipped it around, but the front end over here is where the light's going to be hitting, and that's diverging. So when you looked at this, you would say, aha, a negative focal length. Okay. 
All right, uh, now we have to go through and do the same thing for the variables on the right-hand side. Well, first of all, how about the object distance? Well, if you only have one lens or one mirror, the object distance is always positive. The object distance is always positive unless you have more than one lens or mirror. If you have multiple lenses or mirrors, you might get a negative object distance. But uh, with only one lens or mirror, the object distance is always positive. I think that for uh, your course, you might not even do multiple lenses or mirrors. We'll, we'll see as we look at the problems that you were assigned. Um, but, but certainly in the vast majority of cases, you're only going to have one lens or mirror, and then you just put in a positive sign for O. Um, but it still would be a good habit to put that positive sign in so that we're thinking about the signs. But for a single lens or mirror, the object distance is always positive. So that's simple. So now we should think about the image distance. 